Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel History Books. I'm Camilla and today I'm finally ready to tell you about my predictions for the Women's Prize for Fiction. And I say finally, really it's in the nick of time because we are the 14th of June as I'm filming this. I'm going to try to publish this today as well. And tomorrow is the announcement for the winner of the prize for this year. So <laughs> really last minute, but I just finished the sentence, which is the last book of the short list that I finished reading like last night. So yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready now um, and we'll see how it goes. And I'm really excited for tomorrow. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. Uh, of the six books, I, well, I read all six of them uh, throughout the, like, the last few months. And I decided to talk a little bit about each of them very quickly uh, in the order that I enjoyed them, I guess. So we're starting with the one that I didn't love. So it's my bottom sixth one is The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki. This book, I actually reviewed it back, I think it's in April in the kind of shortlist reaction. I also reviewed the books that I already read from the long list. And this was a book that I, that didn't totally work for me in terms of the narration of the book, uh, as in the book being the narrator. <laughs> I also thought it was far, far too long and sometimes a bit contrived, like so many things were just crammed in there. It, it was a long book, but it just felt like it was trying to do too much. So yeah, some stuff didn't really work for me. And to me, it was just really just stretched far too much. So that's the only one that I feel I would be a bit disappointed if it won. But, you know, that's just personal to me and how I enjoy this book. The next three books are books that I've enjoyed. They were okay, you know? Like, I don't think they're books that will stay with me. But they're books that when I read them, I was really kind of pleased that I got to read them, really. And the first one of these was The Sentence, actually, by Louise Erdrich. So this one, yeah, is the last book that I read. Actually, I listened to the audiobook read by Erdrich herself. And it was actually a really interesting narration. And I just love, you know, the bookshop, the ghost aspect, even the COVID aspects. There's something to me that was a bit forgettable about this book. I don't know, it just generally didn't totally work for me. Maybe it was the, just the, the sort of structure of the book, the kind of plot to me didn't really work that much or I, I wasn't really that pulled in but I really enjoyed the characters and especially all of like, the really topical stuff that was mentioned including obviously like Black Lives Matter uh, protests and COVID and just indigenous rights and stuff like that so I thought that was really really good but generally it was just lacking a little bit for me. Next I read The Bread That I Will Need by Lisa Allen Agostini I actually just finished it over the last weekend and uh, I thought it was a great book. I really enjoyed reading it and by enjoy I mean like I thought it was a great experience to get into the life of these characters. I thought as a main character Alethea was really uh, strong and great and it was just a really great portrayal uh, of domestic abuse and especially like the domestic abuse like circle like a vicious circle but I didn't really love how quickly things just kind of happened I feel like it was lacking substance a little bit to me like it was just like events after events a lot of dialogue which I think makes it easy and fast to read a book but also I just feel like there was some flesh missing to this you know and I also really didn't love all of the sexual abuse being described um, I feel like there's been a recurrent theme in this uh, list where I feel like I've read a lot of stuff with sexual abuse, especially of children. I didn't love it and also well, it was difficult to explain to you stuff that I didn't really like because it was toward the end and to me like the twists and turns didn't really resonate that much and I think it's because I've seen it before and because it's a traumatic thing like I feel like that's not a nice trope to see again uh, but I can't tell you what it is unless you've read it you maybe understand. That said, the actual ending of this book, I actually thought was really fabulous. Like the last kind of two chapters or something, really, really good. So generally, I think it's a book I would recommend because it is a quick read, but I had some issues with it. So that's why it's in the just like, okay section for me. Next is The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. I actually really like Shafak's 
vibe. <laughs> I can only explain it as vibe. But I love her writing. I love that she really has something to say. It's like a global perspective when she does write books. And I just really, really love that. And there's stuff in this book that actually really touched me personally. And that's something I go more uh, into details in my review, which we can you can also read in my read view. <laughs> in my uh, shortlist prediction video, which I will, uh, which I have linked above, but also link in the description below. In this one, there's plenty of stuff that she does right, as always, of all the other books that I've read by her, is in terms of like bringing topics of identity and culture and, you know, chosen family and stuff like that. I really loved it. The narration of the tree, again, didn't work for me. It's very similar to the Book of Former Emptiness, um, where I also felt in this one that I was trying to do a lot and didn't quite do it for me. And you can go see what I actually really loved about this book in my full review. Next, we're at the last two books that I read and the last two books that I really enjoyed, actually. And I think they're the two books that I maybe hope will win, think will win, we'll see. But I really enjoyed reading these books. Um, the first of these was Soar and Bliss by Meg Mason, which I'm actually really surprised about because I think it's been hyped a lot. And it wasn't really quite what I expected, actually. It was better than that. So obviously it is a book that talks a lot about mental health and mental illness and we follow this main character who at first is, seems to have depression but as someone who has suffered from <laughs> depression before I was like that's not quite what it's sh like I was like struggling to understand her behavior sometimes um, but in the third quarter of the book she gets another diagnosis and even though it's not named, it's extremely frustrating because I feel like she could have just gone with something and kind of gone with that taboo of that illness. I really love the shift. So in the third quarter, I actually almost didn't have the book because I thought it was, I was really frustrated with the character. But she turns it, Meg Mason turns it on his head and the character is actually told, like, you need to actually think about other people. <laughs> and I like when characters are actually told that because main characters are often self-absorbed and that's fine we're all self-absorbed around our own lives but I just wanted to see more kind of personal responsibility and you get that in this book and the last quarter of the book was really good and ends on a kind of hopeful note which I thought was really positive as well so generally I really enjoyed this book it was so easy to read as well I think Meg Mason's writing is actually really kind of approachable and accessible and that makes it easy to read you know and I, I feel like I devoured this book in a couple days because it was so easy to just read like 60 pages in a row and yeah I thought that was really good especially when it's talking about such a tough subject it was quite witty as well which I know some people have issues with but I like a witty writing you know witty characters and the play on words and all that I did have some mini issues with it because it reminded me of the exhibitionist which was part of the long list which is the book that I hated the most <laughs> And I kept having resonances of that book coming and I'd be like, no, no, you have to separate. Because I feel like I would have liked Soren Bliss even more if I hadn't read The Exhibitionist. So yeah, anyway, let's not rehash The Exhibitionist again. So yeah, that was my thoughts on Soren Bliss. And finally, the last book. And I have to say, I think my top book from this list is Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. And while I didn't love everything about this book, I thought it was an epic book. I thought it was a journey. I thought it was an adventure. Both storylines, although I didn't love the Hollywood actress storyline, I still felt like both of those just made for like such a big perspective and uh, also talking about not just the role but you know like the way that a uh, woman's place in society especially during two different periods and yeah I just thought it was really good and I really loved the ending which bumped it to me to I think like a four or five star really. I thought it was really excellent. You can see my full review in my May wrap up, which I published quite recently. So you'll be able to see that there. So general thoughts about these six books or just generally the list of this year's women's Breath fiction has been that it's been a lot of really good books. Like all six of these books probably deserve to win. They they're all great. Um and they're all well written, great perspective, great things to say about uh, our society like mental health or just how things are happening and I really truly think that that's so important I also really love how I think all of these books and a really hopeful note which I I love that I think if you have a book with trauma to me you have to end it on a nice 
or a hopeful note anyway. It doesn't have to end well, but you know that something is going to, in the right direction. I think to me that makes a book, maybe that's not the most realistic, but also I feel like, you know, I don't read books to just feel miserable. So I liked that it was a hopeful ending, even though these books were packed with trauma and far too much that <laughs> like I need to take a break and go and read some like fancy romance now because this was a lot of abuse and stuff like that. What do I think is going to win the prize this year or like tomorrow really? Well, I, I really think that Grey Circle is going to win. Like I said, it's not just because I enjoyed it. I just really think that the epicness of it is what is giving it is like I don't know impact and so I think that that's a book that deserves to win although like I said I think all of them you know could win uh what would I like to win well I made my list of the six books in order and I see Grace Girl was at the top so I think that I would like it for it to win but I think Soren Bliss was also really good so we'll see we never know what the judges will think uh I'll be pleased to see any of these six books win although to me like even though Great Circle and Sorrow and Bliss were my favorite, I don't think to me that they've topped Creatures of Passage by Moro Yeji Day. So that to me was my top book that I read from this year's list of the books that I read. I think there's four or five that I didn't read because I didn't get, have access to them. And yeah, I thought that that was actually so, so good. There is some child abuse in that as well, but I thought it was a fresh perspective, fresh writing, just the magical realism was such an interesting addition to it. Like I thought in a more interesting way that that Lewis Erdrich did it with the ghost in um in the sentence. I thought the creature of fashion was so good. So to me that's my winner. <laughs> but obviously it's not on the short list, but I still think that that's my big recommend of this year. All right, um, I think that was it for my thoughts. Oh my God, I'm really excited for tomorrow. I'll, uh, we're still on holiday, as you can see. Where are my in-laws right now? We're heading down to South England um, today. And so I uh, will be over there. So it'll be a different background again tomorrow. And we'll see, I'm really excited. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hey, see you back tomorrow to see my reaction. And very exciting to see who wins the Women's Prize for Fiction 2022. Bye-bye.